money in the bank Baby, please don't stress me out I just wanna have some fun And a bank too much to shout But that's fine, I'll chase his mumsy She don't love him, but she loves me Feelings mutual, baby, trust me, baby, trust me David told me fire upon them I, I don't even wanna watch them Cause the way that they're hating That, that shouldn't be a problem What's up, everyone? My name is Walt, and I'm the creator of Boss Lux and your very own Buy Black Friday shopping guide. Now, Buy Black Friday is a brand new show from Boss Lux Media, and our mission is pretty simple. We're here to help you make buying black a lifestyle and not just a trend. You see, buying black is only a trend if you do it on the holidays or when you see other people doing it online. But when you ensure that your money is consistently being spent in the black communities, establishment, cultures, that, that's when it's a lifestyle. You know, there's um, this quote by Killer Mike I just came across the other day. And he said, if you're black and American, you should keep your money in the African-American community. Now, I agree with that 100%, but I'm honestly not here to tell you what you can't buy. I'm just saying it's time to be more intentional about where we're spending our money. And that's what um, we're, we're here to talk to you about today. But not only that, we're going to get into the clubhouse craze and kind of some of what Master P was saying. Uh, we're going to talk to you about a Black-owned company that got a $3 billion valuation. Yes, Black-owned. And we'll hear from a Black tech founder about his journey to create and launch his own social platform. Now, I could keep going and going because I really love this topic, but I'm a big fan of communities and also don't like doing these things by myself. So I wanted to bring up a few people that I consider part of my personal and Boss Lux community to dive deeper into this topic. So first up, we have Steve Worthy. Steve Welcome. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for for uh, for allowing me to be part of this, man. I really appreciate it. Oh man, truly my honor, man. So, um, Steve, uh, there there's a particular reason why I brought you here today, but can you um share a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, no, absolutely, man. So I'm Steve Worthy. I'm CEO of Worthy Leadership Group. We are an executive coaching firm, and we focus in on Black and minority leaders. We focus in on helping them, helping them with the journey. You know, one of the things we found is that as leaders, you have to learn a little bit more about yourself so that you can save time, so that you can lead faster, but ultimately accomplish something of significance. And then I'm also host of the Worthy Podcast, soon to be a Worthy Leadership Podcast. And what we do is we focus in on the same thing. We actually help Black and minority listeners kind of navigate their leadership journey. So I'm excited to be here with you today, man. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Had to bring you in here. Um, I think what you do just really helps a lot of people just on their journey. But I know you have uh, interesting perspectives just from um, uh, just the consumer side, the mentality, and also from the business side. So really oh, yeah. excited to hear what you have to say today. Got it. Um, now, up next, we have the Black <clears throat> Tech founder, Adrian Cole. Adrian, welcome. How are you doing hey, today? What's, what's going on, Walt? I'm doing pretty good. Wonderful. I'm really excited to have you here. Um, I think that we couldn't have started this off without you uh, just because of what you built. I think that what we're here to talk about today it directly affects you. Uh, so, Agent Key, share uh, with everyone a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, name's Adrian. I'm a, originally, I'm an engineer. Um, so, don't, don't let the cool fool you. I'm a complete nerd. Um, I'm a creative host and I'm working up. Start Voice Blast. We're creating a platform for short form audio content and uh, building community around interactive audio. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. See, that is so <clears> interesting. <throat> that we're talking about Clubhouse today. And I know uh, when Clubhouse came out, that was the first time anyone had ever heard of just like a audio based social media platform. And yeah. I'm going to put myself in that category. But I know we had connected like right before I think Clubhouse mm -hmm. like really, really hit the news and everything. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, man, it's kind of interesting. I could see what you were talking about from a whole different angle. But um, we'll we'll get into all that soon. But I'm excited to have you here now um, with by Black Friday. We all know it's 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 about to be Black History Month in like a few days. So we're about to have a lot of attention on us basically on our community, on what we do. And it's a great time to be black. And I think there's going to be a lot of money spent from all different cultures in the black community. But I'm more so concerned about after February, when it comes to March, April, May, up until Juneteenth, will yeah. probably be the next time it's like a, a trend again. So I know something that was uh, brought to my attention in my Working While well Black group, it's a Facebook group, part of Boss Locks, is like, all right, so... Um, <coughs> We're, we're all about buying black, but how can we consistently do it? And some other people were talking about, yeah, like how, um, and not not just like people who like choose not to buy black, but also on the business side, 
making sure these black owned businesses have everything they need. Mm -hmm. Now, um, one thing I wanted to share with everyone is actually a report that ran because I think sometimes we think as though like we, we really can't support our own or we just don't have the funds. We need other people's help. But there was a study back in 2019 by Nielsen that studied basically the buying power of the black community. And I just thought it was so fascinating. Like I remember reading it back then. It just always stuck with me. It's like the power of the black dollar. Mm -hmm. And they found basically like, um, I think they counted us at 47.8 million strong. We have a buying power that's on par with many countries' mm. gross domestic products. And furthermore, they were saying that African Americans continue to outspace uh, spending nationally. So we're basically not just outspending other cultures, like everyone combined, we're just spending more than everyone. So it's like when we think about buying black and needing support to build our own, it's like, I feel like we, we really can do it on our own. Like we have everything we need. Yeah, so um, I wanted to, uh, before I keep going, because I could keep talking about this forever, but I just want to hear some of your thoughts on just um, from from the black consumers and buying. <clears throat> like, But what do you think when you think of like, all right, so we we do outspend everyone, but maybe not so much with our own communities. Uh, what are some of your thoughts? You no, know, I, I I mean, no, I, can, I completely agree. I mean, I, 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 oft, I often think about, you know, what we spend on. Right. You know, because we can talk about the the actual dollar amounts and all that other stuff, too, associated with it. But what what are we spending it spending it on comparatively to, you know, other, you know, other other nationalities? And then from a savings standpoint, right, it's a difference. I always think about spending versus savings. So we start talking about building up community and building up all these and, you know, infrastructure and, th and different things like that where you know the, the one of the pieces needs to be about not just the spending aspect but what are you saving and how are you actually utilizing that money uh, to you actually help help the help the community as well too so the the while the study I was just looking up something else and it talked about the road the road to 1.5 trillion dollars in spending for the black community and this was in this was this was some a report from from uh, 2018 so I can just imagine that that that's not that's probably like one, that's probably at least maybe one point eight, almost two trillion, you know, the road to two trillion. So I think the real question, not the real question, but one of the questions is going to be like, what are you actually spending it on? Facts. Yeah, I know um, in that Nielsen report, they're sharing that. And of course, I think like actually, do you all want to take a guess like to hear like what are some of like the kind of the industries where our either our money or attention goes the most? If uh, apparel, entertainment. apparel entertainment. What about you, Adrian? Yeah, well, I actually know. I think I've read that study before, and I think that uh, where we over index the most is um, hair, makeup, um, beauty products. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's like the the trifecta of those like entertainment, uh, the beauty industry. Those are like our main key areas, and it, it's funny. Like the beauty <clears throat> industry it makes perfect sense because like we. There's a, a lot of different factors, of course, to making sure we look good and all that stuff, but entertainment as well. So um, I think it's kind of like interesting when I see that report and I think about all the different entertainment platforms that have shifted a lot of their energy into investing in black. Cause like, it, it's great, the representation, cause I've, but also I feel like, um, I always wonder what the intent is, you know, like mm -hmm. last Friday when everyone's like, oh yeah, black lives matter. Like I'm like, okay, what, what's, what's the well, intent? Well, I mean, well, 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 I think that that's a good point to make, right? So let's stop there for a second. Like, what's the intent? Like, if you're, if Netflix was a nonprofit, then we can have that conversation. But Netflix is a corporation. So let's not, I mean, that's where it starts, right? Like, they're a corporation. They want to make money, first and, first and foremost. They're going to follow the opportunity. They're going to follow the eyeballs, right? So let's not, let's not let the black shows necessarily fool us that it's more about representation. It's about the bottom line, right? It's a very competitive industry. Disney's in the game now. It's about how do we get an edge? We know that the majority of our viewers are black. We know that they over-index on viewing, streaming, time spent streaming. They will buy products that advertise on these shows. So let's focus on creating content that way. It's not rocket science. And so the intent is the bottom line. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick for I want to shout out DeAndre. DeAndre, what's up? Thanks for joining us today. And also anyone who is watching live, feel free to comment. And uh, if you have anything interesting to say or just want to say what's up, feel free to do so. We're watching live. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you um, 100%. And it's like, um, it's it, it's kind of like almost like it, it could work if there's like a mutual type of um, 
I don't know if it's like respect or agreement. I, I think about like Dave Chappelle's kind of situation with Netflix. I don't know mm-hmm. too much about mm-hmm. it, but mm-hmm. yeah. there's obviously uh, yeah. a respect between them. <clears throat> yeah, that that situation. Um, love that dude, man. But that situation, when you think think about what he did and what how how he walked away from it, I think part of it, of course, it is. It's it's money, right? At the end of the day, like it's just like you know, to to, to Adrian's point, right? That's just like where you start from, you know. But I think. When you went from Dave's, Dave's standpoint was around also was around creative control. I think if um, you know Adrian may may know a little bit more about that too, just because you know he's in that space. But from what I've read and what I've heard, and, you know, from interviews and things like that, it was just around the creative control associated with with it. Because if if you know if he wanted to keep it as authentic as possible from his thought process, and then I, I think it was just the more the commercialization that aspect that trying to come into it. So he kind of walked away contract was big money was big all this other stuff but you know what what does it profit a man you know if he sells his soul right so i think he was just like i'm not trying to do all of that this is what i want to do a lot of people didn't like it a lot of people didn't understand it you know especially black folks were like dude what are you doing walking away from all that money you know he was like no he his his his, uh his morals whatever it is that he wanted to do um took took hold man so i I think part of it of course is the the fundamentals is is the the foundation is is the financial side of it but then when you get to a certain point um you know like regina king you know now she's directing she's doing she's doing her own thing and i think one of the things i heard from her was around also her having creative control too as a director not just not just the the money um from to actually produce and and, uh, and get the show or movies to go but she actually wanted to make sure she actually had the creative license to do what it is that she wanted to do and to tell the story is to tell the story that she wanted to tell Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, when when you guys think about this, uh, these things, these companies who are um, giving some people like some creative control, uh, which is great, and then also, but there's also companies who are just like kind of playing with the the facade to kind of have it up, like, oh yes, it's all wonderful. And you also think about buying black because it's not just a monetary thing; it's also where our attention is going. True. Um, do you see any trends on having like? our own, I guess, versions of like uh, Netflix? Well, I think we do, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot her name, but we have um, a a young lady who's doing Quilly TV. She's been doing that for better part of maybe three to five years. Um, Mm -hmm. And the programming on on her streaming platform is primarily um, Black Diaspora programming. And so, and so we have all these other outlets that are created. Um, they just never really get the funding to become mm. mainstream. And a lot of the time, and this is this is probably a deeper topic, but you know, when you when you create a product, especially around technology, um, at, you know, even if it's created for the black community, you still have to innovate in some way. Because right. that's re- that's really what's going to pull people to to use the product. Because you can only su- it's like you know it's like your sister or your cousin, and you know they start a business, and like <laughs> it, it can be great, but you don't really like it. I mean, but you support it a couple of times, but after then it it, it kind of wears off, right? But if their product is really good, you will keep using it. So at the end of the day, I think that if for anybody who's you know trying to create like tech products and things like that, the first thing you have to do is innovate. Right, mm-hmm. make the product good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it's marketing, right? It's distribution. You know, I know um, Quelly TV has been going on for a while. She's got a strong user base. It's really, it's really about getting the word out there. And at some point, you know, you do have to have a marketing budget that is that is pretty sizable to break into all this noise. You know, I, I, I don't know, Miss. This may be, you know, a deeper question too. But I often, I often wonder how much of the trust factor kind of comes into play, you know, around when we, where we spend our money and we do want to talk about black owned and is there, have we been, have we been socialized for so long? One, not to, not to, you know, properly spend our money in, in, in the black community because we may not feel like we're getting the quality to, 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 to Adrian's point of what, of whatever that product is, that end product may be. Um, I often feel, I often feel, you know, sometimes it's, 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 it, we would rather go and spend the money on a proven entity or proven um, brand 
than actually trying to help, you know, say what, what we'll, we'll get into what, what, uh, what, what Adrian's doing here shortly, right? You know, how do we, you know, switch, you know, from that known entity to making sure that we help companies like Adrian, what he's trying to do. Does that, does that make sense? You see where I'm going it with does. that? You, you see, it does. Right. Actually, that's a perfect segue actually into um, oh, my bad. <laughs> um no that, I think that's a perfect one into kind of what uh, Master P was kind of talking about with uh with Clubhouse because it, it's exactly that we did rush to Clubhouse. I mean it's a great app, definitely. But uh l- let me um play what he had to say just as a refresher and for anyone watching. And I want to hear what you were having to say, Adrian. We you know we going on Clubhouse. I keep telling people we go on Clubhouse, we make an, another one of them a billionaire. We just did it just with Clubhouse. We need to create stuff like that to where we control the narrative and we able to put money back in our community and our culture. But, you know, if one of us did that, we would be saying, nah, I don't think, I don't think that's gonna work. Why would you call it clubhouse? It's not a club. We come up with all different types of excuses, right? Nobody cared. Everybody went on clubhouse, blew this up. You know, this guy went to the bank, got whatever he want. Uh, he's gonna, take that company public. We're not thinking like that. The only way we're going to be successful, we don't have to start taking companies public. That's the way you build wealth. All right, man. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to go ahead and play that there. Cause I think Steve, you were, um, it, it is a deeper topic, but, and I don't think master P was a hundred percent right, but he wasn't wrong either. Right. Um, so, Adrian, you were about to say something, I think, in response to Steve. Um, uh, right. So sure what I was going to say was I think that when you look at consumers and products that they use and brand strategies and habits, mm-hmm. I think what you're, what you're going against is, is years and years of innovation with product mm-hmm. delivery. And Correct. so, yes, you can say, you know, um, you know, there is something as a switch in cost, right? So when Absolutely. there is something as brand loyalty, and, and these companies spend a lot of money in creating that relationship with the user, with the customer, with the consumer. It's very hard to break, right? And so to do that, you have to A, create a better product, mm-hmm. right? B, create a stronger brand. And C, well, just put it out there and hope for the best, right? And so when you're looking at a lot of Black entrepreneurs, primarily because of bank loans and lending offices, you know, really squeeze the bag when it comes to that. You're looking at people who are doing upstarts, right? And there's an on-ramp to quality, right? Even Nike, I think Nike right. shoes, the soles used to fall out back in the day, right? Yeah. And so yeah. like they had an on-ramp too. And I think what we're, what we're seeing now is that we have this intersection of, okay, we have a lot of black entrepreneurs creating things, right? But then consumer demand and consumer quality that they expect is so high that there's mm-hmm. a mismatch, there's this gap. Correct. And oftentimes what we try to do is we try and close that gap with the loyalty to the black community, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But it's not very convenient, right? Consumers Correct. still want that quality. They still Correct. want that Correct. order now in my house by tomorrow. And yep. and we live in a society, unfortunately, that, that really loves convenience. I mean, look at Blue Apron, um, mm-hmm. Uber mm-hmm. Eats, DoorDash. I mean, you go on and on and on and on. These are multi-billion dollar companies that are created out of convenience, Right. And so it's really hard to break. It's a, extremely hard. And, you know, and black folks ain't the most patient people in the world. No, we're not. You know? <laughs> it's so, like, well, you got to I got to wait two weeks for some for some deodorant. No, nah, yeah, I'm going, I'm nah, going to Amazon, nah. bro. I'm, yeah, I'm they, getting this they, up tomorrow. No, and, exactly. And, and look, and look, I, I think we're going to have growing pains as a community. Um, mm-hmm. I think that as time goes on and on and on, I think things will improve as you know, technology becomes more widely available. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, the dollars will start, you know, trickling down and, and things will start staying in our communities as we go. I think that one way to, to do this um, is to go hyper local, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I think when you, once you're in the internet playing field, it becomes very obscure. Um, but if you go hyper local, if we go back to, I mean, COVID didn't really do us any justice here, but if you go hyper local again, you start going to local markets to buy your groceries, buy your, buy your stuff for your home, by, I mean, all these pop-up shops that, that were actually starting up. I think that was a great thing. And for me, we kind of yeah. start offline, build the relationship there, take it online, and then blow it up that way. Yeah, and I think I think to your point around the uh, around the connection that you that you need to have, you know, with with the brand, with that pop-up, 
you know, over time, right? Because that's the, that's the other thing too. We talked about just the convenience side of it, right? I mean, <clears throat> it, it's just, it, I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember blockbusters and I, I'm old enough to remember when like a movie would come mm-hmm. out, it would take, it would take two years, two years almost to get into blockbusters after the movie came out. Like it would take a long time. Mm-hmm. So, then, you know, then, then, now, then you have, you know, you had Redbox and all these other things. And so now the mindset over time has truly shifted from, to you know, convenience. Give it to me now. Let's go. I don't I don't want to wait. Everybody else is everybody else is getting it really quick now. So how do how, how can you get it quick? So when I think about a lot of times, maybe some of the things that, you know, um, products or um, services that we may be creating within the black community, the thought process is still to to to, you know, Adrian's point is that gap you're relative to what you're trying to offer. Is it of quality, but how quickly can I actually get it and consume it? And then how much, here's the other thing, how much is it of it is going to impact my life? Like right now, right now, because we are such a hyper, hyper market, hyper, you know, consumerism around whatever it is that I'm buying. I need to have it now because it's going to, it needs to impact my life right now. I run into this all the time with the clients they want to that's why i just said earlier like they want to save time so that they can leave faster but one of the things that i help them with is slowing them down so that they can truly understand themselves understand what they need so once because once they do that now their decision making process to their direction becomes a lot more clear and they can say no to a lot of other stuff but you know you think about it from a product standpoint it's a matter of we don't have. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to think. I, listen to me, man. I, I got. I don't. I got probably fifteen, maybe twenty things in my Amazon cart right now. I don't need half of it because half the time I'm looking something and it goes. It pops up. I'm like, oh, that's nice, and I will put it in the cart, right? So I think we have to have to like collide and close that gap, but also think about what we're trying to do, what we're trying to innovate, or the products that we're trying to bring to market. How is that truly going to impact you know life now, but then also as you kind of continue down the road as well. Mm, I love that. I love both of you all saying, and it sounds like, um, um, like from the consumer side of it, it's kind of like a combination. Like, I think like we as consumers need to understand that. All right. Yeah. So this is a black owned business. They just started it. They're not going to be where Instagram's at or Facebook's at or Netflix is at right off the bat. It's going to take a lot of time. And I love that analogy you mentioned, Adrian, about, I think, uh, you said where the Nike soles used to come out. Mm-hmm. But that's just part part of the the ramp up to where they are today, and it makes perfect sense. It's kind of interesting. Like there was this um, conversation on Clubhouse, and it was recorded, put on YouTube, and it was this founder of this app that was similar to Instagram, except they had were based on monetization. Like basically, they would allow you to monetize, like regards if you had zero followers or whatever. And it was interesting because people were coming at him like, "Oh, you mm-hmm. haven't had this if it's this," but it's like, "Yo, he he just put it out." Instagram's been out since I think I don't even know. I, I got on in like 2014, but it's been out for so, years and they're backed by Facebook, Facebook, yo. Like they, they got billions to spend on this stuff. Like what why are we trying to tear him down when obviously he doesn't have the same type of resources as like a Instagram? But um right, it, it's right. all about kind of just knowing that it takes patience. So maybe the kind of the communication, I think that's why I don't want to be like stop buying this only buy black it's kind of like just make sure you're intentional about buying black because it um it takes time it takes time to build something of value mm-hmm. and it takes time to get it to where it needs to be but we also need to support them at the same time so yeah you gotta I, take a risk and you gotta take a risk because i know i know you're gonna talk later you're gonna ask us later about you know different businesses you know black owned businesses that we support but you gotta take a risk right you know um you know Brittany, who i'll talk about a little bit later too she's a web designer right and she's black, you know, we, we all went to the same gym together that she started. She started out as an engineer and then she moved into this web design space and um, she was just starting out. But man, her business acumen like superseded like her skill set from a web design piece initially. And so I said, screw that. I take her business acumen right now because now her skills are like through the roof. It's crazy. So now it's like they're, they're matching up her business acumen, you know, with her skills. And so and and she's at a point now. I'm glad I got her when I did because I probably can't afford it now. 
You know, right. now I'm now now I'm on her monthly plan. Like I'm on her monthly maintenance <laughs> plan, which is awesome. And I can get my website updated and all I can get new pages, you know, but the but you know, you know, now if I came on a new as a new client, you know, forget about it, right? I gotta find somebody else. So sometimes you have to take a chance. Um, you know, when you start to when you start to think about that, but also help them, you know. I have tons of, not tons, but I have a lot of business experience. And so just, I also helped her out with maybe some, some of her thoughts too. Right. So it's almost kind of this, this, you know, reciprocity thing that you can, you, you can, you can, you know, create with other people, but you got to trust, you got to trust, you know, you got to trust first. So, so there's this, there's this phenomenon for, for anybody who's been in a, like, you know, car accident or played sports, uh, you know, it's called phantom pain. Phantom, right? Phantom pain. <sighs> right. And so, and so, I think that there's this there's this phenomenon where oftentimes when we look at black products, man, we, we take that we take that magnifying glass out and we, yeah, we do and we, and we go to it, you know, and and a lot of times we always always assuming that products that are created by non blacks are great. How many things do you buy that break by the third week and you return that shit? Right. Yeah. Right. We don't we don't really consider that, but God forbid Adrian made that product. Oh my gosh. This is why I don't buy a black, right? This is what I mean, come on. And so I think that there's a certain level of tolerance that we have to we sort of have to calibrate that over time. And I don't think that that's gonna happen by just beating it down people's throats. I think it's gonna happen right. by people creating awesome products, people creating awesome companies that are really doing well people who are doing amazing things and cause that's what people respond to, right? You have to, it has mm -hmm. to be branded well, right? It has to feel organic. It has to feel natural. When you look at Cali now, it's like, Ooh, that's a black dude. Oh shit. It's a billion dollar company. Okay. I can do it too. Right. And I think that more mm -hmm. things like that, when you look at, uh, I think I believe I name's Bo Dixon with honeypot, like, like that's a black owned yeah. business, but they're yeah. like, oh, they're, they're like they're, black -owned. they target. Quality yeah. stellar packaging is yeah. amazing. Yeah. The 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 design work is I, you know everything about it is just really on point. And I think that she's not going around saying, "Hey, look, I'm black on buy for me." She's saying, "I got a great mm -hmm. product." And by the way, I'm a black CEO. And just yeah. by just by having that combination in itself, right, is good enough for people to make the connection and support it, right? Yeah. And I think that companies that that often tend to lead with that, oh, well, black owned support us. Sometimes the product, you know, or the service is not as great as it should be, and I think that's not an excuse. At the same time, mm -hmm. I agree. I was, um, I was with Target, and um, I was when I left, they were right in discussions with her, and um, a whole bunch of other other black entrepreneurs for products that they were bringing into 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 the company. They they had this big mindset of like, you know, this is what we're going to do. This is what we need to do, and so. It was cool to kind of work for a company, and it, you know, yes, at the bottom line, was it was it around you know you know money, but it was also around the fact that the quality of the product. The, to your point, you know, Honeypot was, was was solid, man. It was just it was just outstanding. It was just great, man. And so at the end of the day, here's the other thing, man. That and I don't know if we're gonna get into this. Maybe we will. Is that you know, a lot of times black folks want deals. Right. You know, we, 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 you know, we, we, you know, like I'll just keep going back to Brittany, you know, like now her, her, her prices are pretty, pretty steep, but the quality that you get and, you know, we, we have a, whenever we actually connect, she, she always just kind of vents. It's just like, oh man, like, you know, people don't want to pay me or they don't act like they, you know, so I don't bring them on as clients. And so I think sometimes we also, as, 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 um, as black people, we have to, you know, to 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 Adrian's point around that stigmatism sometimes around the quality, even when the quality's high, sometimes we feel like just because it's black owned, like yo, hook us up, right? And we don't say it. We don't say it. I've had I've had it with clients. I've had it with clients. The majority of my clients are black. You know, and I I I I send them my you know my proposal. We do a Zoom call. Man, I can feel the underpinning of like oh. Yo, 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 that turned in half. Can I do a payment? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm, just, I'm just saying. You know, it's part of, look, it's part of the culture, right? And it's, it it's, it, at, oh, at this point, it's, 
<laughs> I mean, I'll be taking a company IPO, and if and if and if the if the underwriter at the bank is black, he's probably gonna look at me like, "Come on, man, half a billion less is not gonna hurt you." <laughs> Well, it's like it's like it's like it's, it's like it's like you walking down the street, like you walking down the street, and you know, you know, you you I don't know, you run a whole bunch of white folks, and you see the black dude, you know what you do, you know, you know, you go head like nod. that. It's just in the head now, right? And it's almost like that. We think about it just in 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 in, in business sometimes, right? You know, to, to like yo, come on, man, you know, like nah, man, like no, like the quality of what I'm giving you is is high. Yeah, but no, I 100% back, feel back, you. Back. It, it's kind of interesting. I think some of the things I wanted people to take away from is like what it really means to support a black business because it's not criticism. Like I, I don't think I'll ever forget that video I mentioned earlier of people kind of just coming at this guy who built this app. One person literally said like people were criticizing. Someone's like, we're not going to tear him down. It's like, we're not. We're helping him. But I was like, yo, you're, you're not. Your, your feedback isn't feedback. It's real like criticism and ultimatums and stuff and i think really when we think of like what it means to truly support a black business it's a combination of understanding uh trust and communication i think through communication that's where that feedback comes in so you don't have to be criticism it could be like hey you know your customer service isn't poor it's not ultimatum i might come back still i mean i'm not telling y'all to just to keep going back to a place that has horrible customer service but i mean sometimes we have to just take a step back and be like, all right, so why is this that? And is there another way that I could support? It could be through resources. And that's something else that I want to provide with this because it's not just encouraging people to buy black. It's also uh, providing resources and access for black owned businesses because we don't all have it. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about Calendly a little bit more. I know we mentioned it some, but Calendly is a black owned business that recently got a $3 billion valuation. Like I think it's literally the same weekends that, um, that clubhouse announced their valuation Calendly mm -hmm. did theirs. And I actually wouldn't know. I want to shout out Martin Pratt. Cause I didn't know that they had got that valuation until he announced it. Like, and it, it's so interesting because Calendly, I don't think anyone on their site, you'll see black owned. Like nowhere. I, I really mm -hmm. don't think they advertise about it. Like when I found out, I didn't believe it. And I I thought I wasn't really sure. I kept on checking. Like every month I go back and check, like, is it black owned? Did it start black owned? Then <laughs> someone else bought it? Are they still black owned? And it wasn't until like an interview um, on the show I like with the founder, he came on and was talking. I was like, okay, no, it's it's been black owned, is black owned, will beginning. continue to be. Yeah. And it's amazing. <clears throat> um and, and it kind of makes you think, you know, I, I don't, I think a lot of people are, don't want to label themselves as a black owned business when they're at like a Calendly level. And I think sometimes people are like, oh, if I label it as that, it'll kind of hurt the business. Uh, what do y'all, what do y'all think about that? Like, yes, what, I'm, I'm going to jump in this one because uh, yeah, I, have, I have some, I have some conviction about this. Um, I think that again, you know, I think we live in the modern world now where, you know, the product's got to be really good, first of all. So we've established that. And the fact that mm -hmm. you are at the head, you are the owner of the company, is tough, right? I think that, again, if we go back to this thing, people start a business, you know, if the product is not really great or whatever, it's like, okay, well, let me slap on the fact that we're Black-owned. Let me push that because then I'm going to get the support even though the product isn't great, right? Now, I'm not saying everybody that does that has a bad product. What I'm trying to say is that the product should be good first, right? Calendly was an amazing product, period, right? Black-owned or not black-owned, it's an amazing product in a sea of products, right? There's probably hundreds of schedulers, right? right? Matter of fact, there's probably right. more. There's probably thousands, yeah. right? And so whether he's black-owned or not, he's not targeting the black community, Right, it's a scheduling piece of software, and so if that doesn't fit into your narrative of your brand, then find a place to put it. Right, it doesn't always have to be. Oh, I'm gonna start an ice skating rink, and it's black owned, by the way. Like, so for me, it's like let let your brand story tell your brand story, obviously from the marketing standpoint, and if the fact that you're black owned fits nicely in that narrative, then tell that story too. Right, right. I don't think it's a requirement personally, right? It's not like you're trying to hide it or mm -hmm. Calendly was, he was trying to say, you know what, let, let me get to a billion first because then these brothers can't get me after that. Um, <laughs> Maybe he was. Maybe he was. 
shit. Maybe he was like, like maybe he was like, like, like oh. after I get a Billy, they can't say shit after what that. that movie, what was that <laughs> movie about the black the black dudes? I mean to cut you off, man. It's on it's on Not um it. it's a true story. It's a true story. And I and I uh, my wife watched it and I, didn't, I haven't watched oh, it yet. Oh um the I think it's called the banker. The banker, the banker. You, you know, I, I guess. Seen you know, no, I haven't seen. I haven't but seen. But they it. used the white. They used the white dude initially to front. Like, yeah, you know, yeah like, I heard like, that. I heard about like, that. Yeah. So maybe, maybe he. No, I know he. I don't. I don't think he was. But uh, no. yeah. I. I mean, when I when I before I even started using it, someone told me about it, and they were white, and they were like, "Hey, this is this is a really good like schedule. Like, you, it'll help you with your business, and you know, help you. You know, and it's fluid. Awesome. So I was like, okay, well. For me, I just did did my due diligence. I looked online, did some research, and I was like, "Oh, I was just like, yo, what? Seriously? Like this dude? Like wow? Okay, the, the, the owner, this the 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 entrepreneur, the the guy who started it, right? This black. I was like, yo, I'm definitely. And then <clears throat> to Adrian's point, the quality of the product, the quality of the product was like, it's still it's still outstanding. It's still it's super intuitive, and so, you know, I, I think the fact that he's black owned, um, I, I won't say had little to do with what he's what he's done, but I think it's it's a, it's a, it's a great case study. It's a great testament to what can happen, you know, when you just have a great. You know, I keep referring to Agent because I love it because if you the quality, man, the quality has to be has to be there, and so. You know, and then the crossover effect of it as well. Yeah, he didn't position Calendly as, as as a black scheduling company. No, you know what I mean. He was like, "No, we're a scheduling company. You got a business. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you do. This is this is the product that's going to fit you, and it's and it's high quality. And oh yeah, guess what? I got a billion. I got a billion valuation on a black or three billion valuation on a black. Oh my bad. You know. So there you go. What you going to mm-hmm. do? What you go you know, do? I think I think there's one thing there's, there's one thing to take away. I mean, well, Walt's always talking about you know um, actionable insights and things to walk away with. Yeah. Um, I think there's one thing to note here is that, and I, and I often say this to a lot of people. So at some point, I started a web design agency myself. I had to shut it down so I can focus on voice blasts. But I often told people a lot of the time, you know, you're building this website, um, you're spending thousands of dollars doing this site, but you're not going to use it, right? It's just going to be there as a fucking ornament and um, with with Calendly, what's important to note that he used the power of internet marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It's like let I mean viral loops, right? These are real things. Like Calendly, the way Calendly grows, <clears throat> when you talk about internet products, there's something called a viral coefficient, right? Mm-hmm. If it's greater than the value of one, it means for every one person that signs up to you, use your product, they're going to bring more than one person to the product, right? And so it grows. That's and that's yeah. virality. Right? Everybody talks about yeah. virality. And yeah. so when you use these techniques to build your product and your service, you don't have to be standing there saying, "By the way, I'm black owned. Come use the product," right? Just let the product work, right? And so I think that's the part that sometimes breaks people's like mental models of how to market when they don't necessarily understand how the internet works quite well. And that's interesting. I think there's a there, and, and of course there is, right? But it, the 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 major difference is in the, in the context of a product versus a service, right? So I'm in the service industry, right? And so, you know, you, I I can't help but to show my face, um, you know, when I'm when I'm de- when I'm dealing with a client. But you know, my my business, you know, I, I had I had a lot of people actually. Say you know well you know you should just like you should just like do leadership just for like everybody like you know and I did start out doing it you should do executive coaching for just everybody you know and I was like you know that's a good idea but I I I feel like I'm uniquely qualified to help black dudes you know black and brown dudes you know with their with the with their journey man and so I think you know you so the quality once again, of whatever it is that I deliver still has to be top notch. It still has to be high quality, but you know, I can't hide the fact that I'm black, nor do I, nor, nor, nor do I want to. And so I think those are the, those are the, that's a variation, if you will, you know, and, and, and if it's a product and you want to your point, if you want to lead with that, right. You know, they always say in the movie, you should have led with that. Like if you want to lead with that and it fits your narrative, then go for it. Then, you know, hundred percent go for it. Right. But 
don't 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 get upset. Don't get upset if somebody doesn't like it. Not so much the fact that you because it because it's black owned. They may not like it because of the quality. So I think it always just kind of goes back to that aspect as well, too. Have you have you read Malcolm Gladwell's book called Blink? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Listen to the audio book. Yes, yeah. Man. That's incredible. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like there's um when when you combine the concept of blink and you put you know this phantom pain together, yes. I, I think that you you have you have a construct there that is worth exploring at some other time. But there's a construct there where you know the, the issues that we have when 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 folks bring that lens, you know, to the black right. product. Um, and again, figure out what you're selling, whether it's a service or it's a product, and let the brand story make sense, right? Like just make it make sense, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And and I think that if you do that, then you've done more than enough, right? Like people will support you where the, where they will. If it's a great product, people will use it. People will tell their friends about it. Um, even for me right now, well, the people, so over the past three days, my so there's two people in my team, right? It's just me and my CTO, and there's, there's nobody else. It's just two of us. I'm I'm doing the design, everything else, um, growth hacking, planning, business, fundraising, all that stuff, and he works on the code piece. Um, so we don't have a lot of resources, right? But over the past three of <coughs> three days, our waiting list has been doubling every day. Mm. That's right? powerful. Right, so because people are going. Yo, there's a black version of Clubhouse. Here, go sign up, right? And it's like, yeah. well, not really, man. It's kind of two different products. You know, it works differently. You know, we're an Android. They're not. And 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 I'm just like, you know what? Say what you want. Like, when you use a product, if you love it, stay. If you don't, um, tell your friends about it. Because at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, and you tell people about it, you might just hit somebody that actually does. So so go yeah. ahead. In the mm. product world, we always say you want you want two types of users. You want ones that really love your product, mm. and you want ones that really freaking hate it because those two talk the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, it sucks so bad. I got to try it out. I got to right. try it's it like, out. Right. It's like, man, I'm mad about this thing. I mean, I've seen people go about Clubhouse and like, you know what, man? This thing sounds like it's hot trash. By the way, got an invite? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, I just hosted a room. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and so you I applied for a second. I was like, eh, I'm not doing Clubhouse anymore. Then I got the notification, like, oh, I'm back on it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I keep I keep acting like I'm not gonna use it, but I'm definitely using that thing. Right. But um, Adria, I want you to really share like what what your platform is because I think it's really yeah. incredible what you're building and that you're building it. Uh, so tell tell us a little about Voice Glass. Right. So um, so the backstory very quickly is um, this one day I was sitting on my couch listening to my favorite podcast. So I'm an audio nerd completely. I don't even watch TV. I actually don't even own a TV. Um, so I get all my content from from audio, audio oh, books, wow. podcasts, yeah. and talking to people. I talk to a lot of people. Um, and so this one day I was listening to this to the show where the host was like, oh, I can't, I can't bring black founders on the show because I can't find them. I'm just like, the hell you mean you can't find black founders? I know, I know about 50 right now. And mm -hmm. so me being me, you know, I decided to just start my podcast after that. And so once I got into podcasting, taught myself how to podcast, loved it, got got some great guests on, started doing the show. I then very quickly realized that, hey, wait, like, who's my audience, right? So if you go to your podcast and show, you just have a dashboard and, and you can't really see who these people are. You see age, you see region. For me, that wasn't enough. I was like, okay, well, I want to talk to these people, right? And it, it so much so became a real pain when I started to experience pod fade, which is when you start to not record episodes, right? And I was like, well, you know, I just want to send a quick message to my listeners to just say, hey, this is what I'm working on. This is what's going on. A matter of fact, I might have an idea that I want to drop or a resource, create a whole show that's only 60 seconds or two minutes. Mm -hmm. And so that's the initial idea was to send guests, connect and sharing information and just essentially talking to each other using audio. And so that's kind of where the birth of, 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 of Voice Blast started. And we've sort of migrated from podcasting now to just interactive audio in general. So the idea is that we want, we, we want to build a platform where creatives, influencers, subject matter experts, and community builders can connect with their audience organically, naturally through using audio. I love it. I love that so much. Um, 
I think I love the platform, but also that story behind it. Cause it's like, you didn't just build something to get rich. I was kind of curious. Like, I, I don't think I'd yeah. ever really spoken to you about why you started it before, but that it just makes perfect sense. Like you were building something to really solve a problem exactly. that kind of came from a love that you had. Exactly. I, I think that's amazing. Yeah. So like there's, there's a famous uh, founder, Paul Graham, who's like the founder of Y Combinator. And he, he often talks about like, and so, and so this is like one version of that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to solve this problem. But what was interesting is that, well, when we launched the first MVP, it was primarily on desktop, um, only available on the web. What I noticed was that everyday people who had never started a podcast loved it, right? Because mm -hmm. all they needed to do was click a button, say yeah. what's on their mind, yeah. and then someone else would just pop up and respond to them. To them, that was this massive feedback loop, right? Because when I spoke to a lot of podcasters at the time, everybody was struggling with engagement. You heard it so many times. I'm trying to engage my audience a little bit more. Right, everybody right. was engaged, 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 because that feedback loop was so long and wide, and there was no medium for it. And that's why Clubhouse is so powerful, is because they shortened that feedback loop down down to seconds. I feel that. So, um, man, I. That makes perfect sense. And um, I want to, because uh, I, I can feel myself wanting to slip into just like this podcast talk and everything, because I love this. But um, um, in the sense of like buying Black Friday and supporting black owned businesses, um, part of why I wanted to have you on is because you are a, a tech founder and it's just, it's a different type of uh, business. Like the, the journey is a lot different. So I'm kind of curious as you look to grow, what does support look like to you? Hmm. Wow, that's that's a good that, that's a good point. Um, in terms of the lens of the landscape, or me personally, just um, I guess kind of combo. Like I, I know um, as we're encouraging people to really what kind of what we're doing is kind of shifting <clears throat> our dollars and our attention towards things that are created and brought to us by Black people. Um, mm -hmm. And social media is such an interesting place because that's really it's like you find what you love and what you're comfortable with and you kind of stick with that. You might have mm -hmm. another account here. Like I have a TikTok account. I've had a TikTok account for a while, but I think this past week's the first time I've really spent more time on it. And I still to this day won't even really go all in on it. So mm -hmm. it's like almost like a whole nother challenge, I think, to come through with the social platform. Um, and I'm not saying that to make it sound like you're not doing something that's good because I love what you're doing and I see the use and how people could use it. But um, when you're looking to grow like everyday people, like how can we support your journey? Cause like, we can't go in there and code anything, but yeah, yeah. I broke in there. I did. I was on there. I was on the, on my Mac. I broke in there. I oh, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, was in there. I, I created oh, a whole man. bunch of stuff, man. So I'm sorry. It may not look the same when you go in there. Oh man, that's perfect. I'm, 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 I'm joking. I can't, I, I can't code appreciate it. appreciate that. No, I think that, look, I think broader, broader scope. Thankfully, when you look at um, a lot of tech products, primarily, let's say, SaaS products, software as a subscription <laughs> service or whatever, um, a lot of those have free tiers, right? And so, you know, you might be no chimp and you find out that, hey, you know, some other um, black entrepreneurs building a mail service, you can actually just go sign up and check it out, right? Sure. If you like it, it costs you nothing, right? And so when you ask me about, okay, how does, how does support look like to me? It's, well, if you are part of the target audience, right? And you enjoy audio, right? Anything remotely close to that, give it a shot, jump in, try it out. If you love it, tell your friends about it. You know, it's really that simple. It doesn't really go on past that point. It's like, if you love it, tell people about it. That's yeah. it. Because yeah. that, that just... Based on the viral coefficient that I spoke about earlier on, I mean, it's so easy for, for one. I mean, Steve, the fact that you know about Voice Blast now, right? Your actions after this, after this, this, this conversation could possibly bring on a thousand people because you go off and you tell two people and then and they tell four and they tell eight, they tell twelve, you know what I mean? So that, that grows exponentially. So it's really about just trying things out and then just sharing it. That's really it. There's the 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 most powerful thing on social media is the share button like quite literally like you use that and and share with i mean it's cost you nothing just share it that's it yeah i think that i think the bottom line or the the core thing is trust right i i, I you know i i coined this phrase and i should have freaking trademarked it but it was years ago it was like trust is the is the new exchange 
It just, it is, it has been, and it was because I remember, I don't know how many, it probably maybe two years ago, maybe it was two years ago when my wife, she said, uh, Hey, you know, um, you know, can you go to Panera for me? I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I'll go to Panera. She said, well, you know, pick it up. I said, well, do I need to order it? Do I, yeah, I yeah. said, no, they got this new thing. All you need to go, all you need to do is to go in and just pick it up out of the cubicle and then walk out. I was like, what, what are you talking about? Like, no, I don't, I don't need to show them like a receipt. I don't need, they don't need to scan nothing. She said, no, they just, you just go in, you pick it up. I remember the first time I did that, like I said, I don't know how many years ago it was, but I walked in, I'm like, I'm just here to pick this thing up and I'm not stealing the food. No, nobody's looking at you. <laughs> nobody's looking at me and nobody's, nobody's looking, at, looking you. at you, but it was the adoption. It was the adoption of that technology, right? The trust factor that it's paid for, it's, it's prepared. It's placed there, and the person who actually um, purchased it is going to be the one that actually comes comes in here and pick it up, right? So that's mm -hmm. a, a lot of a lot of layers within that value chain from a trust mm -hmm. standpoint to actually mm -hmm. get there. So we start talking about sharing. That is that's the ultimate trust. I'm not going to share something with you that you know if, if you know I'm going to share something with Walt. He's going to be like, okay, well S Steve sent it to me. I trust Steve, right? Mm -hmm. And so. So I think that's the piece that when well, when that trust breaks down, you know, that's where the oh shoot, okay, Walt sending me another thing. You know, okay, I ain't going to clubhouse, you know. Right, you know, right. So it really <laughs> it really depends on on on, on who tells you about. It. Look, every marketer on, on the yeah. internet knows that the yes. best marketer is your best friend, right? I I have gone as far as like downloaded stuff on my friend's app. Like you need to use this. It's really great. Try it out. Like, yeah. I mean, the company can never get that close to you, right? And so we sure. they really rely on building a very strong brand, building a very strong core user base and let them be advocates. Like right now I said, you know, our waiting list is blowing up. Right after I get off this call, I got a meeting with um, an email strategist. We're gonna put something together to start sending out and turn those, you know, those first subscribers into our core advocates. And from that 500, I promise you, we're probably going to get to ten or twenty thousand. I love it. I love it. It seems like uh, the the theme of today's show is kind of trust. Um, I think like trusting in the company and just knowing that it's going to take a minute, but we're still here. Trust that they're going to go through. Uh, from the business side, just trusting in our consumers, and I love that analogy the uh, Steve you mentioned just now with the whole pre-check out just pick up the food and dip um i thought so interesting because i started getting that from chipotle and it's mm -hmm. like yo you can really just walk in there and take whatever but they really do trust that you're just going to take exactly what you ordered so i think it's like a, a mutual trust from both ends. it's kind of interesting it's almost like we have to get back to our core basic principles of what it means to be like a decent human yeah um, like your shirt I like your shirt that's right humane human which by the way is from a black owned business called just black um wanted to wear this shirt uh, on this thing just to show um, supporting something other than my own stuff. Cause I do have shirts, but I think sometimes it's bigger than ourselves. So my yeah, just I, I got I got to ask you guys something. My hair is black owned. Hey. <clears throat> hey. <laughs> I got to ask you guys something. Um, so I've had this thought where it's kind of like missed opportunity and, and we're probably mm -hmm. not going to dive into this cause like, I think we're way over now, but so a lot of black entrepreneurs struggle with marketing. Um, I noticed that just from being in the agency business for a little bit. It was like, whoa, like people really struggle with marketing. Mm -hmm. But we have these two locations where almost every black person goes through in the space of a month. The barbershop hmm. and the salon, mm -hmm. right? Those are massive entry points that we're not really building products. When I say products, I mean experiences around. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like you can have um, name a product that you can fit on a table. Right. So you can you can actually have every barber introduce products to the people that they cut. And then when they sell, you get a percentage of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, like, have you guys ever thought about marketing and, and reaching people through these outlets that we frequent already? Interesting. That's we used to call that consignment, like back in the day, right? You put a product out there, and then, and then somebody would come into the store. And, and I'm I'm old school retail, um, from back in the day, and you know, and and that was a way, that was a way. So if you did have like a shirt, you know, humane human, hey, hey Steve, you know, can you put these up in my, uh, you know, when I had here, I used to go to the barbershop, 
And that's exactly what they did. They would put T-shirts up and do would like, you know, if you bought it, then you got a cut. So I think for me, it's um, it's interesting to to think about um, maybe using some of those. I haven't really thought about it, to be honest with you, to use some of those platforms, um, you know, to 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 promote my business. Or are you talking about for me personally or are you just talking about from a from a from an overall black owned you know, business strategy standpoint? No, it's overall back on. Back, oh, I'm sorry. Overall okay. Back on. okay, okay, okay. Because, 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 remember, no, 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 no. Well, well, there's two things. There's overall black owned, and we talk about the trust factor, right? Trust. We all trust our barbers, right? right? We because we let them cut our hair, and we're very particular with our yeah. hair, as yes, black folks. Um, and so, you, based on that, based it on that relationship, is yeah. that a pipeline that we're not exploring? I, I guess I. I I guess you got to think about the product and the service, right? Because once again, you know, when I come in there, when I come in, I, when I, once again, when I had here and, you know, you would get, I would get cats that came into the store selling, you know, this is once again, I'm old back selling CDs, right. Or mixtapes, you know what I mean? And so part of that was like, okay, well, you know, they put it in and if you liked it, then you, then you buy it. And so, I think you got to think about what whatever that product is and how it's going to meet the needs like to, for today. You know, mixtapes and T-shirts back in the day was was easy. You know, nowadays, what does that look well, like? Is that product? Yeah, so, like? so, so the way I look at it, you know, we're in the experiential marketing yeah. phase right now, and so it it can be marketing, but it should never look like marketing. Agreed. Right. Completely. For example, if if it's a body spray, right? Right after yeah. you you get a cut. My man's like, yo, let me touch you up, bang, bang, bang. Oh, by the way, it's from this brand. Here's a sample, right? It doesn't yeah. have to look like, oh, by the way, get this, right? It, it can be yeah. part of the experience, right? You know, you get a free cut, and then we touch you up, and then, oh, by the way, you can go ahead and smell these notes, pick one, and we'll just dash you right now, yeah. right? Yeah. And once that person leaves that, that shop and, and they get a compliment, guess where they're going to go to go buy the actual product? Right. True. And so True. the marketing can really fit the experience. It doesn't have to stand out like a store. You know, back in the day, a guy shows up with a box, opens it up, like, yo, man, <laughs> you just like, whoa, <laughs> listen, I do not want to go to jail. <laughs> yo, that movie just came out yesterday. How you got, <laughs> you got in that right. box? Like, you know, this brother, this brother caught me when I was at the shop. I came out the other day and like he's standing there, opens up his trunk. He's like, yo, you watch TV? I'm like, no. Nah. I was like, well, I had some 60 inches back here if you did. I'm like, even if I did, man, I would not be unloading <laughs> that yeah, in low my car right now. Right you know, the information. Exactly. Low I mean, put it in right. there. 60, you know, they, they knocking at your door. Like, give me that. Right, right. But it's funny because, because millions and millions of dollars, I don't even, I, probably not billions, but millions, hundreds of millions of dollars have flowed through places like the barbershop and the hair salon. Uh-huh. So these yeah. are valid. These are vol. These are very valid marketplaces, right? Yeah. And we shouldn't yeah. overlook that. Yeah, well, I yeah. think I think your key is what you just said about the word experience, right? Because, you know, what what does that experience look like? Um, you know, what do you go? The, the core too is also like, what do you go to the barbershop for? A lot of times, you don't go just for the cut. Same thing with oh. hairs. So you don't right. go just for the cut. Like I think a lot oh. of people don't think about it maybe they do but you don't just go for the cut you go from the camaraderie you go for like to talk crap about lebron james how he's the trash talk you know about, like, yeah, about lebron james how he sucks or how you just talk about how he's listen, a new okay. michael jordan i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry what listen to this listen to this listen to this so black folks we don't have a lot of patience when it comes to waiting for service right no but the brothers will sit there for yes. an hour and a half listen, oh, right. i said yeah. I'll sit at the barbershop for two and a half hours and yes. I'll be good because I'll hear a new song. Yes. I'll see some new some new clothes. Yes. Some new shoes. This right. brother's talking about his experience last week. Someone's right. getting a I'm, I think I tweeted this out a while back. I said, like everybody talks about black men need to go for therapy. I said, we've been going for therapy since we could walk, right? Yeah. When you sit yeah. on that chair, it yes. doesn't matter how old that barber is, he's gonna school you on something for the day. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> and so that therapy, right? It's not sitting on a on a chair in an office somewhere. You get it when you go for a cut, 
You we need to start sending barbers to like a therapy school or whatever it's we called. We really you know? should. We should that's, double that's up. The key right there. <laughs> that's the key. So how you doing today? You know. What does that mean? Yeah, exactly. They, they can de-escalate like anything. You know, but the police officers can. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, throw that out there, but they can. You know, right? They. I mean, you know, you go in there, you probably pissed off about something. Your girl or what? Would work? Whatever. You sit down in that chair and that barber, he can, he senses it. Right. And he can like, yo, what's going on? What's, what's going on with you? Oh man. You know, you know, you, you pray. Yeah, they can feel it. They can feel it. Yeah. They can yeah. feel like, oh my girl. Oh man. What, you know, what, what, what did you do? Right. You know, and you're like, what are you talking about? What did I do? Right, this is right. I did, right? So it's a, it's a, there is a lot of therapy that kind of takes place, but I love, I love what your thought process is around the, the overall experience and, Look, how it's you, been it's been you. it's been it's been one of my secret fantasies to open up a barbershop that was all about experience. I mean, we're talking about walk in, grab yourself a coffee or a scotch, and then yeah. sit down whilst yeah. you're waiting. You can either get a foot rub or a neck rub, yeah. and then you know there's a tailor somewhere in the back. Like you, you, you basically just take care of that person, right? Because because yeah. you, you got to think about it, right? There's missed opportunity there. How does someone feel after a good cut? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you feel on top of the world. You feel good. That's someone that's just waiting to be sold again. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, and we and we miss that. We miss that opportunity so hard. I want you to walk past the clothing store on the way out and pick yeah. up a few threads. I think you're onto something for real. And grab um, you a few notes at the same. Well, there's time, a spot that's right? already out. And I mean to cut you off, uh, because I know we're gonna talk about black owned, and they are black owned. They're two twins, and they live in right, Charlotte. They live in, they live in Charlotte. They went. I went to high school with them, and um, uh, and they, it's called No Grease, and it's called. So look it up. It's called No Grease, and um, they have been Check cutting out. hair. They have been cutting hair. I moved. Um, I moved from New York to Charlotte in '96, and I think they were. I think they were already down there. They think they left and they were down at prices 94 and they've been, oh, wow. and they've been still, they've been doing it ever since. And so they've expanded and grown into all these different locations. And so they have, oh, wow. dipped, they have dipped and dabbed into exactly what you're talking about. Almost oh, like a speakeasy right. for a barbershop. So to it's speak. a speakeasy for a barbershop. There you you go. Know? Oh, so, so they've actually kind of moved into, in, into that, into that space. So whoever's listening, if you're down in there in Charlotte, like check them out, man. And um, yeah, it's called No Grease. You know, they got a lot of controversy initially for that on their logo because it's almost like a Sambo, you know, logo. It's a black face with like the white thing around it. I don't know if they still use that logo or not, but I know they use oh, it. Oh man, that's a little problematic though. Yeah, yeah, I took a Do look at it? that. Do you see it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little problematic. Yeah, well, they've been using, but they they've been using it ever like since they started, since they started, and so wow. um, yeah, so they got they used to get a lot of flack about that or whatever, but but yeah, they they've they've kind of blown blown up um, pretty much in in Charlotte. So they they kind of like they, they don't say they've cornered the market, but they've been doing it for over twenty some odd years now. I was, I was just thinking about this that. right now. If I ever open up my barbershop, Walt can't cut, and you don't have hair, so. Like you guys are the worst customers to start hey, off with. I come up for the beard lineup. Right, that, that is there. true. That is true, and we can. Okay, you point. Yeah, point, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there for the massages, all that stuff. I want my. I can do the experience. Yeah. You can, what you can do is I can. You can just do a ball head line, and that'll right. be me. There we and go. I got. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Boom. We'll do that. We'll do that. Get you a head rub and, and put you on the steamer. <laughs> That's wow. it. Yeah, and I'm I, there to support that. I can give them some coaching at the same time. Yeah, yeah, you, and and they do need some coaching, you know. Barbers, barbers, barbers are often uh, very interesting folks. Um, mm -hmm. Very creative. Yeah, I, I love that you brought that up, man, because it, it reminded me of this. Um, uh, so there's this kid. I don't know how old he is right now, but he was like a teenager when he really blew up, and he's got like Diddy's phone number and stuff. He started this uh, t-shirt business called Spurgo, and he that's how he started it. He just walked up in the barber shops. It was him and his mom. He was like. This is my shirt. I'm just trying to start a business. And he's basically like, yeah, I'm just trying to provide a way for me to make it. And everyone just immediately flocked to it. Not only like the design was cool and everything. So I think it kind of combined like what you were saying earlier, Adrian, about like the product has to be nice. He came with the product nice. He had this story, which is his story. And he came up through the barbershop and everything. That's how we started getting his first order. So I think you're absolutely right. The barbershop, the salons, those are definitely our places. And 
I think that there is missed opportunities, not just from a sales perspective, but just from a customer experience perspective, because that's, that's what look, it is. Yeah. I've, I've thought about like, yeah, you know, I have way too many ideas to execute, but when you go to the barbershop, you know, there's, there's more TVs that you can, than you can watch, but none of them have a specialized ad network that's built around the consumer that actually goes to the barbershop. And so just something as simple as building an ad network that then is piped through the TV, you know, play the music in between and then run the ads, the barbershop gets a cut and things like that. And, and, and I mean, all that is missed opportunity. We just, you know, throw ESPN or um, MTV on where that's, that's huge opportunity there. I mean, there's people sit there for hours and, yeah. and it's, it's just wasted time really. Yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the barbershop is all, I mean, it's, it has always been, it's always been that spot, man. And, um, you know, I mean, I mean, as a kid, you know, you, once again, when I had hair going there and, you know, it was a father and son and they, they started the barbershop and it was just, it was just, it was just a great time, man. And you would sit there or it's time to go Saturday morning, but you would get there. And I mean, nine o'clock in the morning, I didn't get, get cut until, you know, 12, you know, and all do sometimes longer than that, just because the line was like, you know, you know, around the door. But the, the, the thing was, was that I realized now as I got older, was like, man, these cats were just coming from for camaraderie, man. A lot of cats, a lot of cats like you seriously, you, you, you don't even look like you need a cut. But they get up in that chair. Yeah, right. <laughs> they get up in that chair. They get a little trim or something or whatever, it's, and then they leave. It's, so it's, it's therapy. Yeah. It's really, yeah. I mean, when I said that we've been doing therapy for a long time, I wasn't joking, right? No. Like therapy is not always sitting talking to somebody about your problems, right? Sometimes it's just getting treated, you know. True. Like it's it's the experience, and and that when well, when I go get a cut, I don't know about you, but when I go get a cut for that hour before. Right. And a day after, I'm mm-hmm. pretty much good. Yeah. Right. It doesn't yeah. matter what I'm struggling with. I'm okay. Because yeah. when you yeah. come back and you, and you take a shower and you look at yourself, you're like, hey, you know what? I, I think we're good. Yeah, man. Well, the th- therapy is nothing but wanting to be seen and heard. Like, that's it. Like, I just want to be seen. I want to be able to, for you, for you, whoever you are, barber or therapist, to see me as Steve. But and then listen. I also want you to and listen. Then I also want you to hear me. And and that requires some empathy, and that's that's what barbers do. They're, they they probably won't call it that, but that's empathetic listening, like because they they're they're there and they 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 can empathize with you. Like, yeah, man, I messed up with my girl too, and so this is what <laughs> this, this is the consequences of what you did. I just I just want to I just right? want to so, I just want to I just want to throw this in there right now. Now you see why now now you see why Clubhouse is important. <laughs> yeah. Now man. you see why it's important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Long before, before, before COVID, loneliness was a problem. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. A, it's a global crisis, right? And now you have this app where I explained this to somebody that it made sense to them. You push a green button, and people show up to listen to you, right? Like that's the magic. Yep. They're right? being seen. They're being heard. They're being seen, and you're being heard. It's so primal. It's as primal as Twitter. Hundred um, percent. And and that is going to be hard to step away from. Yeah. Free, right? And it's also mm-hmm. for free. And it's and it's free. <laughs> like I got. And it's free. You're telling me I can have my own platform to talk about whatever it is, Ever. Ever. whatever Ever. it is that I want to talk about, and people right. will come. And they will so listen. Come there's, on. There's, there's, there's this framework I want to leave you guys with um, for anybody who's 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 interested in building anything in the technology world. It's very simple. Um, it's the framework is uses your product and does something extraordinary, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So someone ordinary, any old Joe, pushes a green button, and then hundreds of people show up to listen to you. It's impossible in the real world, right? Yeah. So that's an extraordinary feat. That you've created there. Uber, right. someone ordinary, me, push a button and a car shows up. Right. Prior to that, I had to be rich to, to get myself a driver. And so, like when you think about anything that you're building in the tech space, that model has to work. Yeah. 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 If it's if you if you if you're building something great at the, at the very least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's why we all we like podcasting too, right? I don't know why to work on online, but that's the truth, right? You think about it, like you know, you 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 can create something, you and you have a captive audience, right? The people who are actually listening to it, and so for an hour, for an hour, right? You know, I think all all did one what three hours with with um with Eugene, you know. Yeah, he thought Walt's trying to be the 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 dreadlock. Um, uh, like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. You know, yeah, he, he's he's been out there for a while. Rogan, did you go for three hours? So uh, to be to be honest, I, I, I'm not gonna put out the it all at three hours. I'm gonna break it up into a couple parts. But yeah, we we were in there for three hours, and I only stopped because I had something that was coming up. Um, but yeah. I think that's it's the kind of the power of like just finding people to connect with who could kind of share experiences. And man, his story, Eugene. If you're listening, Eugene Haynes, man, he's an incredible person. And um, it, I just think it's like powerful. And I think it ties back a little bit to what we were all just talking about, about like the, from the barbershop experience to yeah. everything else that that relationship and that, that <clears throat> trust. And I think that's part of why I think it's so important that we buy black and support black owned businesses because there is just a natural um, connection or opportunity for connection and community there between the business and consumers, mm-hmm. the employees, everyone there. And that's why it, it's, it's just a, important to keep that and empower that and to grow that because now we could have like a company like Calendly out here, black owned company, and it's a billion dollar company, regardless if they define themselves as black owned or not, it's a black owned company. There's opportunity to for communities to connect and build with each other. Yeah. Um, Walt Blogan. That's your new name. Right? Walt Blogan. Walt Blogan. You're the black little Walt the black Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Walt, Walt Blogan. Walt Blogan. <laughs> but I think I think I, I think I tweeted this out the, uh, yesterday uh, this morning. I said that we, we're probably going to see about uh, twenty plus black unicorns over the next decade. Um, mm. And even with you know even and this is a discussion that I've had very recently. A lot of people um, that have signed up for our waiting list. Um, a few folks reached out and said, "Hey, are you gonna are you gonna open up the opportunity for the community to invest?" Um, because you know the people that used that took Clubhouse to where it is didn't have the opportunity to invest because the systemic sort of institutions um, have have been built in a way that the everyday person cannot invest in a private company unless you're a credit investor. To be accredited, you have to have, you know either make over two hundred thousand a year or have five million in the bank account somewhere, and so crowdfunding allows you know, everyday people to actually invest in your company right now. So I think that if we as um, tech entrepreneurs who are doing well, open up at least one round of crowdfunding, right? And that company gets, you know, goes public and does really well, then I think that's a way to not just create one um, billion dollar company and to be happy about it, but it's to create one billion dollar company, but then be able to create a thousand, two thousand people who have made a million dollars or so. Right. And, and, and I think I think that um, that's that's something that's valuable, because when that company goes nuclear, you know, Cash App, for example. Right. You know, people. Not, it's funny because no one complains about Cash App, but Cash App is primarily like black, black driven. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet you I bet you didn't even know that. It makes sense. Every you know, it's funny. Um, I didn't know cash apps could be used in businesses until I was going to like black businesses. Like, oh yeah, we yeah. But who do you who do you think so, they targeted? Come on, on bank cash app targeted. Come on, yeah, the, the on bank mm-hmm. people, right? Yep. Like even black people made cash app cool. Yeah, like it's West interesting. Coast because cash app owned by Square, and Square is a credit card processing company. So, like, they were already in the processing thing, but then they introduced this new product, Cash App. And yeah, you're probably right because I know they have like a bank account options there too. It's still Jack Dorsey. He's he's just a he's he just knows he knows who uses product. Mm-hmm. So he's funny. Here's a- Jack Dorsey, he's like has products that really just target the black experience from the social networks to payments. Let me, everything. Let me so let me give you. I'll leave you. I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this last one. So, um, before Twitter, Jack Dorsey and Evie Williams, they're working at a different startup called Odeo, and and Odeo was way ahead of its time, right? They were building a podcast social network, so they tried social mm-hmm. audio. You know how old is Twitter? Um, Fifteen years. If ten, two thousand four. Probably, probably ten. I would say. Okay, so. 10. Okay, Kim let's Ryan say on Facebook though. Okay, so let's say no, it's older. It's about 2006. 06. 
Okay, O six, yeah. right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. so audio, social audio was fifteen years ahead of its time. That's the first product that they tried. Right, the company was dying. No one was using the product. Um, Apple podcasts and things like that on their on their um their iPod. Right, so it killed them. They went out of almost went out of business. Right, then they pivoted to Twitter. So for me, it's actually interesting that that you know social audio is just hitting the right time right now. But mm. but it wouldn't have Twitter would not be possible without the attempt on social audio. And 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 I I I, I discovered this throughout my journey and I knew I knew that social audio was going to be a thing like over over a year ago I was like man we got to we got to we got to work on this thing cuz it's going to get there it only has to get there mm. so you cut out at the beginning a second and but um that was really interesting so you're saying that Jack Dorsey there his first company was a social audio company like that was came out before Facebook and Twitter came out but it failed and were you saying like when Apple moved into audio that kind of yeah yeah when Apple when Apple moved into audio yeah. and Apple had the proprietary hardware that you can stream podcasts on yeah, yeah. and they were primarily web based and yep. remember the iPods didn't have a browser on it right and so they just no no one with the iPod could use their product because they were web based and back then, you didn't have enough speed on your hardware to mm. be able to stream shit. So you had to do it at home. You had to have an internet connection. You had to have good internet at the same time. That was dial up back then. And so <laughs> the, the infrastructure wasn't ready Correct. for audio. Correct. It, it just makes you think like there's there's just so much that um, can happen to a company. Like you could start off as this one company and obviously it, it could fail. But it's just like that continuation to just keep going mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. kind of Jack Dorsey did. And now he has Twitter. And it's interesting because Twitter has the audio portion to it now, too, which I haven't really used, but it exists. Yeah. It just makes oh, me think yeah. about like the black owned business and that trajectory that we were talking about before. Like it does take time. And I think sometimes we have to know and trust from consumer and also the business standpoint that what we see now, it, it may not be that it could go away completely or it could just evolve into something more. And um, that it, it it's interesting. It'd be cool just to have companies just blatantly be like, all right, yeah, this is where we're at. This is where we want to go. Just have everyone kind of along for the journey. So it's like a true community, a community of people really out here trusting and everything. Now, um, I want to, we, we've been going for a minute and I want to make sure we kind of give a few more actionable things within the forms of like businesses that we are going to be supporting uh, today and continuously. So um, I don't know if you guys have any top of mind, but there's a few companies that I want to shout out, uh, companies that are going to be making a purchase from after we get off. One is this company called D's Nuts, and I love it, yo. It's, a, <laughs> it's this guy here in Atlanta, man. He created that oh. company. His last name is D's, actually. His name is Louis D's, but he created this brand, D's Nuts. And I can't lie, man. His cashews, like they, they, they're, they're amazing. <laughs> they're amazing. I love cashews, so I'm in. I'm in. Send me oh, a link. yeah. I will send you the link. Yeah, I actually just yeah. finished it. I was going to have it up here, but I couldn't wait. I just killed them. So I'm going to order another one, probably order multiple. Like, Yo, in fact, if you're listening, I need the subscription or something. Yo. Yeah, there you go. Get him there to do go. a box. Get him to do a box. Right. Sponsorship. 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 Right. Louis. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! This is hey. Boss Locks. This 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 episode of Boss Locks is sponsored by. Guess what? <laughs> 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 go get go get these nuts. Go get these nuts. I know you want these nuts. I know you want these nuts. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the second company I'm gonna support. <laughs> Is um, actually that's, I'm gonna leave my clever. second company. That's, minute, that's clever. That's clever brand yeah. right It's it's bold, right? Yeah, it is bold. Yeah, yeah. it's bold, but it works, man. It works. Yeah. Go get those, go get these nuts. All right. Come on. All man. right. Hold now, up. um, Steve. Yes, sir. You go next. What is one or two? You can give one first. We go back around in a second. But what what's one uh, black owned company that you will be supporting today? Oh, I, I, so this is a little selfish one, a little bit of of it because this one is um is actually owned by my by my nephew, uh, Corey Guy, um, and he is a pri he's a private chef, um, and it's called Live from the Kitchen, and um, he actually he he lives in Atlanta. Right now, he moved down to Atlanta, started a restaurant. Um, it was an Asian soul fusion restaurant. Um, 
did pretty well and didn't, but he had a bad partner. So he ended up going out on his own um, and doing um, doing his own thing. So he's actually been doing extremely well, but he also has these uh, seasonings and some other things that he's actually been able to produce on the side. And so actually I was just talking to him earlier today. And so he, I got an order in for some seasonings and, and all of that stuff, but nice. he's actually been doing really well. So uh, Corey guy, it's called live from the kitchen. Love it. Love it. Okay. I could check that out too. All right, Adrian, um, if you have one, what is a, a black owned company that you're going to support today? So there's actually two. Um, one is a uh, physical location. So I got a shout out to, to a very good friend of mine. Her name is Michelle Talbert. She runs a, um, one of the only black owned co-working spaces in South Florida. It's called Her Power Space down in Lauder Hills, uh, Florida. It's an amazing space. You walk in there and you feel like you're home. Um, really great for events. I've hosted some of my events there. I used to um, do events where I'll bring entrepreneurs together. I actually started a community. I've been started a lot of community stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I started a community out here where we brought Black entrepreneurs together for the purpose of uh, networking, connecting, and just being in a space where we just, you know, enjoy each other and just have, you know, have a good time, share stories and things like that. And we hosted, a, you know, our largest gathering over there. Fantastic place. Um, throughout that process, I brought on, I also brought in some Black vendors as well. I was like, you know what, if we have people here, let's bring in some vendors. So we brought in some vendors. I wasn't able to get this one guy on, but I'm going to shout him out anyway. Um, young brother, he runs a water company called Trap Water. Um, mm -hmm. Super cool brand, and they have different flavors and stuff. You can find them on Instagram. So Instagram, Trap Water, support the guy out. Love that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I, I'm already interested just from the name Trap Water. That's, that's cool. Um, nice. So um, my second one, or I guess my last one as well, is not a product, but a service and experience. It's um, Urban Atlanta. They had these networking events, and they have one the the first Tuesday of every month or the third Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m., either 2 or 2.30. But um, yeah, I think it's really dope. It's a virtual networking event. They started off uh, having in-person ones local because of pandemic. They they shifted. They had to make that shift. And they, they pivoted very well because they have a really cool networking experience. So I've uh, been in there for a while. It helps me, I think, be more comfortable speaking and everything. And um, – it's just a really cool vibe. It's like black people. It's, it's also exclusive to black people. I should say that as well. So I'm going to be there. And I guess next week actually is the next one. They have it first week of February. So I'm going to be there next week. So it's not today, but it is next week, Thursday. Um, now, uh, do you guys have any others you want to shout out? Uh, it's okay if you don't. Um, yeah. Yeah. I had, um, well, we talked, yeah, yeah. We, talked, yeah, we talked a little bit about, um, kind of, uh, organically with with uh, with no grease down in uh down in charlotte you know with what they with what they're doing and then i'm i actually mentioned uh Brittany earlier Brittany garner um she runs um britney's um uh, website design um and it's b-r-i-t-a-k-n-e-e-s.com and uh, she's actually up here. I live on, I live in uh, Ellicott City, Maryland. She's actually in Baltimore. And uh, I got to tell you, if you go to you go to her website, uh, and she just started doing like a YouTube channel and all these other things. So she's she she's actually starting to scale her business. But her designs and her ability to get your website to where where it needs to be, um, you know, she helped me. She's helped me greatly with uh, with my website. Um, everything every aspect of my website uh she's actually helped but more importantly she's like really like i said earlier like she has really good business sense so whenever you're thinking about trying to start a website it's not just about the design for her it's also about how um how does your website fit your business and then the, you, you like the use case right. the, yeah the use case the use case for your website um because a lot of times it's just a matter of like oh i just want to have a website or whatever but no, like it's it, it needs to. I run as Walt knows this. Like I run everything through my website, right? I, I, the podcast, everything. It just it all goes. It's a one central hub for everything. And so, and she was the one that helped me kind of see that vision for that. Because initially, I wanted to have this 
this piece, this and all. She said, no, you need to have one place where everybody can come. They can get all the different things that you need to, that they want to look at and but have it in such a way. So so she helps businesses with their concept. But she also helps them kind of drive business and make money, because guess what? If they're making money, then she's going to make money. So just a great. Just I, got, a I, got, I, I think I got one more for you. Um, so a very good friend of mine, she was with me. Um, so I don't think I told you this, Walt, but I went through um, a startup accelerator that was backed by the Mozilla Foundation. And whilst I was there, I, I became great friends with a friend of mine, Saran, um, and she launched a, a audio course company, right? So it's like masterclass for audio. It's called mm. Hey Disco, um, H-E-Y disco.com. Um, amazing, amazing um, platform. You can go learn about technical stuff, but you know, whilst you're driving to work or whilst you're doing the dishes and things like that, amazing she's been a podcaster for a very long time so she's very well versed in the audio space um and she actually she's one of actually the i would say black podcasters that have grown a podcast and actually sold it oh mm -hmm. have you ever heard of code newbie i'm not sure I don't know. No. yeah so, so code newbie sure. is a podcast about like programming <clears throat> and, and the developer journey so oh, she started that she grew it to about 60,000 listeners, I think, per episode. Um, wow. And eventually she sold the company um, and the content and the brand and everything. And now she's doing Hey Disco. So that's a good one. Check out. Excellent. Okay. That's what's up. So, you know what's funny? I like, as, as each of y'all go and I keep thinking more, I'm like, oh man. It's yeah, I feel like, like, I feel like this, this is going to be a thing. And I'm just like, yo, like, well, we're not doing, we're, we're not doing the Rogan thing today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, yo, all right, all right, all right. Let's go, Blogan. That's right. Go, all right. Blogan. So here's what um I want to end it with. I want to thank everyone for joining. This is a live show, but if you're watching the replay, thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna ask each of you guys to do Stephen Adrians to send me links to the places that you just mentioned. I'm gonna put together an email and also put on the site. So if you're watching, um Stay tuned. Visit bosslocks.org, B-O-S-S-L-O-C-K-S.org, and make sure you subscribe to the mailing list so you are the first to find out when we um, send that email of all the places that we, the three of us, are supporting uh, this Friday and beyond. I want to encourage you all to buy black, not just on Fridays, but every day, but uh, part of the lifestyle is just making things a habit, and that's why I say buy Black Friday. So each Friday, do what you can to intentionally buy Black, whether it's $5 or $50 or more, buy Black. And at the end of every month, you could join us as we speak live just to break down certain topics about buying Black, the Black experience, growth, supporting each other, and so much more. I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I want to give you a chance to plug whatever you have going on because – I um, also want to support you guys, my black people here with me. So, um, uh, Steve, we'll start with you. Um, how can people find you, support you, um, and all of the above? Yeah, no, absolutely. You can find me at worthyleadershipgroup.com uh, slash now. Um, you can find our podcast there. You can find our newsletter there, a brand new newsletter that's coming out, and it's called uh, Focus on Win, uh, What's Important, What's Important Now. So excited about that. Um, we received a lot of really good feedback for, for our soft launch, but you can find everything from about our, our, our executive coaching firm, our approach, how we do things, but also our podcast there as well at worthyleadershipgroup.com slash now. Love it. Now, Adrian, to you, uh, plug away. How can people find you, support you, follow you, and all the above? Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get my Twitter game up. Uh, so <laughs> if you're on Twitter... If you're on Twitter, I've got some hot Twitter fingers right now. Um, you can follow me on Twitter as, at the other Cole, T H E other Cole, and the reason why is because the first Cole you know is J Cole, and, and I'm the other one. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> you know, I, I I'm growing out my hair so I can I can lock out at some point so I can call myself the J Cole of tech. Um, but oh, you like know, it. you can follow me on Twitter and um, sign up for Voice Blast. Go to voiceblast.fm. So voiceblast.fm, and then uh, be a part of our community when we launch. And then and don't drag me too hard when the software crashes. It's gonna happen. But uh, you know, just bear with me. That's my fault because I was in there messing up the code. So 
Yeah, man, you just like control you all. Delete, delete, delete. Like, just, uh, <laughs> you, guys, yeah, like, you guys can blame it on me. You have any issues? But no, I was actually on the platform on on my uh, on my iMac just checking it out. I think it was like yesterday or something like that. I think I was telling Juan. Um, really good stuff. Right. Really good, platform, man. I'm excited about it. Love it. Now, um, yes, thank you all once again for joining. Make sure you're following Boss Luck so that you find out the next time we do this because this is not just a one time thing. Um, it's not a trend. It's a lifestyle. We're going to keep it going. So thank you all. Enjoy your evening. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.